Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Okay, dear. <clears throat> After a very long time, we are starting the classes, online classes. As I think you all are safe at your home. As you know that classes are suspended for a long time and Higher Education Commission is trying to continue the education, continue the academics so that the students can study and their time should not be lost. For that purpose, they have advised to continue the Are you not hearing? Okay, if anyone is not hearing, that may be problem at your network or any other problem, you can identify it. So I was telling that higher education has started the online classes to save your time and continue your study so that the examination can be done or achieved on the scheduled time. Today, we are starting the carbohydrate metabolism. As you know that you have completed the digestion absorption in which we take the food and that food is digested and that food contains the different nutrients. These nutrients are the carbohydrate, protein, lipids, vitamins, minerals. After the absorption, these nutrients, they are interconverted or help to interconvert different chemical compounds, different molecules to another molecules. And this process occurs in the body, in the living tissues. And that process which occurs in the tissues, in the living cells, that is termed as the metabolism. Metabolism, it is the enzyme catalyzed reactions which occur in the living cells or tissues. What is the metabolism? It is the enzyme catalyzed reactions which occur in the living cells or the tissues. Dead tissue does not contain the metabolic process. So it is the process which occur in the living cells. That is termed as the metabolism. This metabolism is conversion of the different chemical compounds. As I told you, it is the conversion of the different compounds that are carbohydrates that is converted, may be converted to the carbohydrate that we take, which is in mainly in the form of the polysaccharides, that is the starch, or when we take the meat that contains the glycogen. So starch, that when we take it, it is converted to the glucose. And this glucose may be converted to the proteins, that is amino acids, that is converted to the glycerol, that is converted to the fatty acids, and that again, these fatty acids are converted to the ketone bodies when they are metabolized. Amino acids, they are also catabolized, metabolized, they give rise the carbohydrates that is through the gluconeogenesis, or they may give rise the carbon skeletal that synthesizes the fatty acids or the ketone bodies. So this process that is the interconversion of the different compounds in the body that is termed as the metabolism the pathways which take by individual molecules their interconversion 
and the mechanism that regulates the flow of metabolites through the different pathways in the bodies that whole is termed as the metabolism what is the metabolism it is the enzyme catalyzed reactions that are taking place in the living cells this process is interconversion of the chemical compounds that pathways which take part in different molecules and interrelation of the different molecules and the mechanism that regulates again regulation is through the bevent hormones hormones that mainly regulate the metabolic processes when we take the food these food molecules they are digested and form the simpler molecules these simpler molecules are the carbohydrate that are the monosaccharides glucose fructose are the galactose lipids they are converted to the fatty acids glycerol rf cholesterol ester is there that is converted to the cholesterol free cholesterol and the fatty acids proteins they are converted to the amino acids so these are the simpler molecules which are obtained from the food molecules they are catabolized to form the common molecule so metabolism it is the process by which the molecules are interconverted this metabolism is mainly divided into three categories one is the catabolism second is the anabolism and third is the amphibolic pathway or amphipathic catabolism it is the breakdown of the larger molecules to the smaller ones and in the end it give rise the reducing equivalence it give rise the reduce one minute it give rise the reducing equivalence in the form of the nadh fadh to which are again further metabolized in the oxidative phosphorylation through the respiration you have done the respiration through the respiration these reducing equivalent they give rise the energy in the form of the atp high energy phosphate bonds are formed and these high energy phosphate compounds they give rise the energy and that energy and the reducing equivalent which are obtained from the catabolic pathway which are obtained from the catabolic pathway from the catabolism they enter in the anabolic pathway the reducing equivalents atp which are formed from the reducing equivalent and the atp which is formed from the catabolic pathway that is utilized in the anabolic pathway and this anabolic pathway is again what is anabolism it is the synthesis <coughs> sorry <coughs> anabolism is the synthesis of the complex molecules larger molecules from the simpler one it is synthesis catabolism is the breakdown or reduce oxidative pathway while the anabolism it is the synthetic process are the reducing process the catabolism it is the exergonic press process or exothermic process in this pathway energy is produced while the anabolic process it is the endergonic or endothermal pathway in which the energy is used and that energy which is obtained from the catabolic pathway that is utilized by the anabolic pathway this anabolic pathway it synthesizes the protein molecules 
it synthesizes the larger molecule of the carbohydrate that is the glucose is converted to the glycogen or glucose is formed from the non carbohydrate compounds that are the glycogen neogenesis there or lipids are formed acetyl coa which is obtained from the oxidation of the glucose that is converted to the synthesis of the fatty acids and that is termed as the lipogenesis synthesis of the nucleic acid that is the dna rna they are also formed that is termed as the anabolism so metabolism it is the process by which the interconversion of the different chemical molecules occur in the body by the enzymatic action these metabolic processes are divided into the catabolism anabolism and the amphibolism catabolism is the breakdown of the larger molecule to the smaller ones it is the exergonic or the exothermal process through which reducing equivalents are the atp is formed these reducing equivalent either they are utilized for the anabolic process or they enter into the respiratory chain through the oxidative phosphorylation they produce the atp and that atp which is formed that also again is utilized by the anabolic process or other endergonic reactions in the body like muscular contraction like the sodium potassium atp system other processes which require the energy that energy is obtained from the catabolic process and this catabolic process is also the oxidative process of the body while the anabolism <coughs> sorry it is the synthesis of the larger molecules in which it produces the proteins carbohydrate lipids nucleic acid from the its precursors it is the endergonic or endothermal process it requires the energy in the form of the atp or the reducing equivalent that are obtained from the catabolic process this process is the reduction process reducing process catabolism is the oxidative process while the anabolism is the reducing process there is the reducing equivalent which are obtained from the different catabolic process they are utilized third one is the amphibolic pathway it is the junction of the both pathways junction of the both pathways from there in this pathway may take part in the catabolic pathway in this pathway anabolism also occur example of this amphibolic pathway is the citric acid cycle citric acid cycle is example of the amphibolic pathway in which when acetyl coa enters it is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water and give rise the reducing equivalent and the energy while in this pathway intermediates are formed like the succinyl coa is formed as you know that this succinyl coa is utilized for the synthesis of different from metabolic path this different molecules like the hemoglobin heme is synthesized from the succinyl coa that is again produced from that well this pathway also give rise the oxaloacetate that is again converted to the non essential amino acids non essential amino acids so this pathway that is the amphibolic pathway it is termed as the amphibolic because it has both catabolic as well as anabolic pathway example of that is the citric acid cycle catabolic pathways are glycolysis is there beta oxidation is there these are the catabolic pathway anabolic pathway again synthesis of the proteins again glycogenesis lipogenesis fatty acid synthesis these all are the anabolic process when we took the take the food 
food contains mainly the three nutrients carbohydrate protein and the lipids these are after the digestion produces these simpler compounds i told you that is monosaccharides from the carbohydrate that are the mainly the glucose it also produces the galactose and the fructose while the proteins they are catabolized they are digested to give rise the amino acids and the lipids they give rise the fatty acids and the glycerol these building blocks of all three nutrients they are catabolized to give rise the common intermediate that is the acetyl coa fatty acids that does not give rise the pyruvate that is directly converted to the acetyl coa while the monosaccharides that are the carbohydrate and the amino acid they give rise the pyruvate some amino acids they give rise the pyruvates like the ketogenic and the glucogenic amino acids both can give rise the pyruvate while the ketogenic amino acid they only give rise the acetyl coa they does not give rise the pyruvate they give rise the acetyl coa some amino acids they directly enter into the tca cycle all these amino acids are carbohydrates and the lipids they give rise the common intermediate that is the acetyl coa this acetyl coa enters into the tca cycle where it is completely oxidized to give rise the reducing equivalence in the form of the nadh2 nadh and the fadh2 as i told you and that through the oxidative phosphorylation utilizing the oxygen give rise the atp one atp is directly formed in the tca cycle when we will do the this pathway we will do it and it produces the carbon dioxide and the water amino acids they give rise the ammonia and that ammonia is used in the urea synthesis now the metabolic process again knowledge of the metabolic process is important due to the abnormal metabolism we can have the different diseases for that purpose the normal metabolic knowledge of the normal metabolism is essential what is normal metabolism that is again adaptation different physiological process occurs in the body like the pregnancy that is not abnormality like the lactation that is not the abnormality like the when we exercise that is not the abnormality these are the normal physiological process so what happens changes during these normal physiological activities like the exercise lactation are in the pregnancy that does not have the abnormalities they are the normal metabolism the adjustment like in the pregnancy different hormones are secreted that causes the different mechanism blood glucose level is increased that is required for the fetus that is normal process but abnormal process abnormal metabolism is that where there is deficiency of some enzymes or there is excess secretion of some enzyme there is decrease level of the hormones there is increased level of the hormone that will lead to the abnormal metabolism if there is nutritional deficiency or over eating of the overtaking of the nutrition that will again lead to the abnormal metabolism like diabetes mellitus it is the abnormal metabolism because what happens in this insulin level is decreased there are two types of the diabetes mellitus one is the type 1 other is the type 2 diabetes mellitus i think you have done the insulin in the endocrine what is the type 1 diabetes it is the decrease synthesis or release of the insulin it is also termed as the juvenile diabetes 
mainly it occurs in the <coughs> young children. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> young children. In this, we have to give the insulin because insulin is not present. Second type of diabetes is the type 2 diabetes mellitus. In this, what happens? Insulin is present. Insulin may be present, but the cells are not responding to the insulin. Receptors which are there in the cell, they are not responding. Insulin is there, but that is not effective. That is not effective. And that is known as the secondary uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus. So two types that we will do in the, again, endocrines. So this diabetes mellitus is the endocrine disorder. It is the abnormal metabolism. Like the marasmus. Nutrition is there when you will do the nutrition. In nutrition, marasmus is, again, disease. You have done a nutrition, I think. <coughs> Sorry. Marasmus, what happens in the marasmus? There is the deficiency of the energy protein. Carbohydrate is deficient, energy is deficient, that will lead to the, again, condition that is termed as the marasmus. It is, again, abnormal metabolism. But when we take the high carbohydrate diet, continuous high carbohydrate diet is taken. And that high carbohydrate diet, when we take it is stored, it is converted to the lipids, we do it. This will again be accumulated as the triacylglycerol in the adipose tissues. And that in the adipose tissues is present, in the different tissues is present, and it will lead to the obesity. And that obesity is also the condition which is because of the abnormal metabolism. Enzyme deficiencies <clears throat> like von Gerich's disease, that occurs due to the deficiency of the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. It is type 1 glycogen steroid disease. That is, again, this glucose is not formed from the glucose 6-phosphate. And that will lead to the abnormal metabolism. So different abnormal metabolism are there. So that is why we should know the normal metabolism. Knowledge of normal metabolism is essential. When we will know the normal metabolism, we can have the understanding of the abnormal metabolism. Now the carbohydrate. Overview of the carbohydrate metabolism. When we take the diet, when we take the diet, diet contain the different carbohydrates. They contain the glucose, they can contain the lactose, they contain the maltose, they contain the sucrose, it contains the starch. So these are disaccharides and the polysaccharides. They are converted to the glucose. And this glucose is mainly, again, the metabolism of the carbohydrate is central to the, it is central to the glucose. This glucose is utilized by the body. As you know that the, what is function of carbohydrate? It is the energy. It supplies the energy and main source of the energy that is the glucose. Glucose is unique compound that give rise the energy nearly to all the cells of the body. This glucose is metabolized through the glycolytic pathway. It is metabolized through the glycolytic pathway give rise the energy and it give rise the it is converted to the pyruvate glucose converted to glucose 6 phosphate then it is converted to the pyruvate this pyruvate is again intermediate it is formed from the glycolysis when there is the aerobic there are two types of the cells one is are the aerobic cells other are the anaerobic cells one are the cells which utilize the oxygen other are that does not utilize the oxygen those which utilize the oxygen they are termed as the aerobic and in these cells the glycolytic pathway which takes place is termed as the aerobic glycolysis in that cells this pyruvate is formed that pyruvate is further converted to the acetyl coa 
and that acetyl CoA is again further metabolized. While in anaerobic glycolysis or anaerobic cells, this pyruvate is converted to the lactate. It is converted to the lactate. Detail we will do in the further class. Then this carbohydrate is when this carbohydrate is taken, I told you it is utilized for the energy purpose. Different animals take the diet at different level. We human body, we humans, they take the diet with the intervals, three times or two times, or maybe some taking the four times, but mainly three times, three diets are taken. So what will happen? When we take the carbohydrates, if glucose is, it is utilized by the body for the energy purpose. If this carbohydrate, glucose is more than the utilization, more than the requirement, then what will happen? This glucose is, this glucose is converted to the glycogen. It is stored in the body in the form of the glycogen. Where glycogen is stored? It is stored in mainly two organs. One is the liver, other is the muscles. This muscle glycogen, it does not utilize, it is not utilized for the energy purpose. It is not, sorry, it is not utilized to maintain the blood glucose level. It does not maintain the blood glucose level while the glycogen which is present in the muscles that is utilized for the energy purpose for the muscular contraction, for the muscular action. Whereas the glycogen which is present in the liver, that in between the meals, when we does not take the meal, this glycogen which is present in the liver, it is converted to the glucose and that glucose is maintained by the blood level. That glucose maintain the blood level. What happens? Certain organs in the body, certain cells in the body, certain tissues, they are solely dependent upon the glucose, like the brain tissue. That is utilizing the glucose for the energy purpose. RBCs, they does not utilize any other compound for the energy purpose. They are solely and solely dependent on the glucose. They get their energy by the glucose. They does not utilize any other compound that is fatty acids or the ketone bodies. So what will happen? When in between the males, this glycogen, which is stored in the liver, that is converted again to the glucose by the glycogenase. So this glucose, which is taken, when we take the diet, after taking the diet, I told you that the digestion occurs. After digestion, glucose are the monosaccharides and the proteins, they are converted to the amino acid. These both nutrients, they are absorbed through the portal circulation, go to the liver, and surplus amount of the amino acid and the carbohydrate that is stored in the liver, while right? the lipids which are taken in the diet, they are not absorbed through the portal circulation, but instead of that, they are absorbed through the lymphatics. They are absorbed through the chylomicrons, that chylomicron turns to the lymphatics, that lymphatics goes to the costly circulation, they go to the extra hepatic tissue, like the adipose tissue, where surplus fatty acids or lipids, they are stored, while then it goes to the liver. That will be again done in the details in the respective classes. So when more carbohydrate is there, that is after the utilization that is converted to the glycogen. But again, liver and muscle has its capacity. Beyond that, they cannot store the carbohydrate. Beyond that, cannot store the glycogen. So when again this capacity is achieved, no more glucose is converted to the glycogen for the storage purpose then what will happen? This glycogen, glucose, sorry, glucose will be converted to the triacylglycerol. 
it will be converted to the lipids and that lipids are stored in the adipose tissue this glucose is also then converted to the another metabolic pathway that is termed as the alternate pathway of the carbohydrate alternate pathway of the glucose that is pentose phosphate pathway or hmp channel this is again very important pathway it produces two important compounds one is the ribose phosphate while it produces the another compound that are the reducing equivalent in the form of the nadph ribose phosphate that is formed it is utilized for the synthesis of the nucleotides that are the nucleic acids dna rna and other okay so it produces the ribose phosphate that ribose phosphate is converted to the nucleotides while nadph that are reducing equivalent that are utilized for the as i told you already they are utilized for the synthesis process they are utilized utilized for the anabolic process and anabolic process that take for again i told you this glucose is converted to the fatty acid and the acyl glycerol they require this nadph this nadph is required by the anabolic processes so what happens glucose it is metabolized through the glycolytic pathway give rise the energy to the body if more carbohydrate more glucose is there when we take the diet when there is the fat condition what will happen this glucose is firstly converted to the glycogen that is stored in the liver and the muscles but again when more glycogen is present that again more glucose is present that is beyond the storage capacity in the liver and the muscles then what will happen this glycogen this glucose is converted to the fatty acid this pyruvate is formed in aerobic condition that acetyl coa is formed this acetyl coa is converted to the fatty acid <clears throat> through the lipogenesis this is converted to the fatty acid through the lipogenesis as you know that triacylglycerol it contains what it contains it contains the glycerol and the three fatty acids contain the glycerol three fatty acids these acyl acetyl coa which is formed that give rise the fatty acid from where the glycerol comes it is again coming from the intermediate of the glycolytic pathway this glucose 6 phosphate is converted to the intermediate that is the triose phosphate these triose phosphate they form the glycerol phosphate that glycerol phosphate along with the fatty acid that produces the acetyl acyl glycerol or the triacyl glycerol clear it is so what will happen glucose after the absorption through the porter circulation goes to the liver surplus glucose is stored in the form of the glycogen in the liver as well as the muscles when this capacity of the liver and the muscle is completed is fulfilled then this glucose is converted to the fatty acids and along with the triose phosphate which convert it into the glycerol it form the acyl glycerol and these acyl glycerol triacyl glycerol is stored in the adipose tissue it is again stored form of the fuel this glucose is ready form of the fuel it is utilized for the energy purpose when glucose is not there then the triacyl glycerol after the glycogen they are utilized they require the nadph which is again obtained from the another pathway that is the pentose phosphate pathway that give rise the ribose phosphate ribose five phosphate and new nadph that ribose five phosphate is used for the synthesis of the nucleotides
same is there i told you this is the pyruvate pyruvate is converted to the acetyl coa this acetyl coa which is obtained from the pyruvate as i told you when surplus is there that is stored but when this pyruvate is normally present in the aerobic conditions it is required for the energy purpose normally it is converted to the acetyl coa this acetyl coa enters into the tca cycle and give rise the energy that is in the form of the atp reducing equivalent that is the nadh or the fadh2 that are again through the oxidative phosphorylation give rise the atp this acetyl coa again i told you one that it is form the it form the fatty acids that fatty acid along with the glycerol form the acyl glycerol which are stored it also is converted to the cholesterol this acetyl coa which is formed that can form the cholesterol and this cholesterol is again precursor of the steroid hormones these steroid hormones are corticosteroids mineralosteroids they are the gonads sex hormones that are the testosterone progesterone and the estrogen these all are the steroid hormones they are synthesized from the acetyl coa that give rise the cholesterol and that cholesterol is converted to the steroid hormone on the other hand this pyruvate that is formed when it is metabolized it can give rise the amino acids through the trans amination reaction it give rise the non essential amino acids as you know that amino acids are of two types one are the essential amino acids other are the non essential amino acids essential amino acids they are taken in the diet they are not synthesized from the body while the non essential amino acids they are also taken in the diet but again if they are not taken they are deficient their synthesis occurs in the body through the trans amination reaction and that trans amination reaction again different amino acids they are converted to the others they are again pyruvate can give rise and other intermediates of the tca cycle they are so through the trans amination give rise the amino acid these amino acid synthesize the protein so this is overview of the carbohydrate metabolism similarly again see here we take this is general overview of the we take the diet give rise the glucose as I, again i told you the center of the carbohydrate metabolism that is mainly through the glucose this glucose which is taken in the diet that is oxidized through the glycolytic pathway for the energy purpose it is again oxidative these are three oxidative pathways remember there may be the question in the viva or in the ospes name the oxidative pathways of the carbohydrate or the glucose it is the glycolysis hmp shunt and the uronic acid pathway these three pathway they are termed as the oxidative pathways glycolysis it is used for the energy purpose it is mainly used for the energy purpose while the hmp shunt as i told you that is for the synthesis of the very two important compounds that is the nadph that are the reducing equivalent required for the synthetic process and the nucleotides which are requiring the nadph sorry which are requiring the ribose phosphate that is synthesized through this pathway uronic acid pathway which is again oxidative pathway through this pathway very important compound is formed that is the glucuronic acid again this question was in your examination also glucuronic acid that is synthesized from the uronic acid pathway this glucuronic acid is utilized for the detoxification of the different compounds like the bilirubin which is present in the body this bilirubin is not water soluble it is toxic it can cross the blood brain barrier and cause the damage to the brain so that is why nature has produced this glucuronic acid that glucuronic acid combines with the bilirubin form the glucuronides this bilirubin which is combined with the 
glucuronic acid, it is known as the conjugated bilirubin. This conjugated bilirubin is water soluble bilirubin. It cannot cross the blood brain barrier. It is excreted through the urine. So, bilirubin level will be decreased. If this conjugation does not occur, then what will happen? Unconjugated bilirubin will be increased and that will lead to the toxic effects. When it is more, it will cross the blood brain barrier and this again will lead to the brain damage. This uranic acid, uh, pathway I'll give rise the glucuronic acid. That glucuronic acid is also utilized for the synthesis of mucopolysaccharides or the glycosaminoglycans or the heteropolysaccharides, like the hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate. So these three are the oxidative pathways, while these are the other pathways, and which again I told you. More carbohydrate is there that is converted to the glycogen through the glycogenesis. It is also converted to the other compounds like the galactose and the memory glands. This glucose is converted to the galactose where this galactose combines with the it combines with the glucose and form the lactose that is secreted through the milk and it is the milk sugar lactose. It also produces the Fructose, because of this fructose, again, it is the main nutrient for the sperms in the, so it produces the fructose that is used for the energy purpose. This carbohydrate, again, I told you, glucose produces the fatty acid lipogenesis and also produces the non-essential aminos. When this glucose is also obtained from the glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. This process we will do in the subsequent classes. Diet which contain again, second part of this is the metabolism that is the lipid metabolism. Again, like the carbohydrate. In the carbohydrate, glucose is the center, while in the lipid, lipid metabolism, fatty acids are the center of metabolism. From where these fatty acids are coming, what is the source of these fatty acids? That is mainly from either it is diet. When we take the diet, I told you that diet contains the triacylglycerol. These triacylglycerol are connected to the fatty acid and the glycerol. First source of this is the diet. Second, these fatty acids they are synthesized from the I told you acetyl CoA. This acetyl CoA is obtained from the carbohydrate as well as the amino acids. It produced from the carbohydrate as well as the amino acid. This gives rise the fatty acid and it process is known as the lipogenesis. Remember. Acetyl-CoA, which is obtained from the ketone bodies, are the oxidation of the fatty acid. This is the beta oxidation. That acetyl-CoA does not take part in the lipogenesis because these both part processes are alternate pathways. Either lipogenesis occurs or beta oxidation occurs. Lipogenesis occurs when there is the fat condition. When we take the diet, more carbohydrate is there, more proteins are there. They are converted to the protein. Sorry, fatty acid. When fasting condition is there, carbohydrate is not there. Then these fatty acids they are utilized for the energy purpose through the beta oxidation. So these both process cannot occur simultaneously. They does not occur at the same time. One occurs, other is sorry. Either beta oxidation occurs or the lipogenesis. Clear? This occurs in the fat condition. This occurs in the fasting condition. So acetyl-CoA from the beta oxidation does not take part in the synthesis of the fatty acid. So fatty acid source, one is the diet, second lipogenesis. What is the fate of these fatty acids? When these are formed, when energy is required, these fatty acids are oxidized through the beta oxidation and give rise to the acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA is oxidized through the DCA cycle, give rise to the energy. Clear it is. While these fatty acids we are when taken in the diet, more fatty acids are there through the 
esterification along with the glycerol they form the triacyl glycerol these triacyl glycerol are stored in the liver they are stored fuel in the body when there is passing condition passing condition i told you these triacyl glycerol they are metabolized they are degraded they are catabolized through the lipolysis give rise to fatty acids and the fatty acids give rise to acetyl coa second this acetyl coa along with the tca cycle that again can form the ketone bodies in the fasting condition in the liver and these ketone bodies again are the fuel for the brain tissue that is fuel of the muscles these acetyl coa also synthesize the cholesterol again i told you that cholesterol again give rise the synthesis of the esterols that is again repeated i as we told you proteins they are converted to the amino acids through the trans amination reaction again i told you non essential amino acids they are formed different non essential amino acids are formed while this amino acid after the trans amination carbon skeletal is similarly converted to the acetyl coa are intermediates of the tca cycle that is oxidized ketone ketogenic amino acids they after trans amination they form the ketone bodies acetyl coa and that acetyl coa converted to the ketone bodies similarly after the trans amination during the fasting condition what will happen the skeletal of the amino acid that is converted to the carbohydrate through the gluconeogenesis same thing. again i told you previously after the trans amination again i told you amino acids they are converted to the non essential amino acids and the glutamate this glutamate after the tma and surplus amino acids they are there when they are utilized for the different functions deamination occurs through the deamination it give rise to ammonia and that ammonia is converted to the urea in the liver and this urea is non toxic it is excreted while the ammonia is the toxic compound so it is converted to the urea non toxic compound and it is excreted these amino acids source of amino acids again one is the through the diet second is the turnover of the tissue proteins when there is fever fasting condition when carbohydrate is utilized fatty acids are utilized then what will happen proteins are used that tissue proteins are converted to the amino acid they are again metabolized these amino acids they are also producing the different non nitrogenous compounds different non nitrogenous compounds like the neurotransmitters hormones nitrogen bases like the purine and the pyrimidine they are synthesized from the amino acids these are nine non proteinous nitrogen compound they are also produced from the amino acids so this is i think overview of the carbohydrate oh sorry metabolism again this metabolism has the different levels some metabolic pathway occur in these different organs some metabolic pathway occur in the different cells and these different compartment of the cells different organelles of cell so we will do in the subsequent classes and today this is i think over of this any this
if you will talk there will be the so noise so if anyone has the question please ask through the chat i will reply to and again see ya you take the attendance through the take the screenshot and send it me attendance amphibolic pathway it is the junction of the anabolic as well as the catabolic pathway like the i told you citric acid cycle what happens in the citric acid cycle it can catabolize like acetyl co is entering into the citric acid cycle that citric acid cycle causes the catabolism of the acetyl co to form the carbon dioxide water and the energy this also can catabolize the different amino acids intermediate of this city when we will do the tc cycle intermediate of these tc cycle they are formed by the different amino acids different amino acids enter into the tc cycle and they are these are again catabolized while example of the anabolism i told you that is the which is the succinyl like the succinyl coa this succinyl coa is used for the synthesis of the heme heme is synthesized from the succinyl coa as well plus glycerol oh sorry glycin both compound combine they form the la and la again synthesize the heme another question was that i think here was the brain tissue the energy for brain tissue that is mainly the carbohydrate that is the glucose though this brain tissue can utilize the ketone bodies in the fasting condition but it does not utilize directly the fatty acids brain tissue it utilize the ketone bodies it does not utilize the other compounds but main source of the energy for the brain as well as the rbc is the glucose rbc is only and only utilize the glucose because there are no mitochondria in the rbcs so aerobic pathways they occur in the mitochondria because when pyruvate is converted to the acetyl coa that acetyl coa will enter into the mitochondria where it is further oxidized so brain as well as rbc they utilize the glucose for the energy purpose any other what is question catabolic process if one thing catabolic process reducing pathway reducing products enter into the two pathways please tell the names what happens catabolic process that causes the oxidation like glucose is oxidized through the glycolysis it produces the energy like the glycogenolysis glycogenolysis what happen glycogen is converted to the glucose larger molecules they are converted to the smaller molecule that is termed as the catabolism like the beta oxidation what happens in beta oxidation fatty acids they are converted to the acetyl coa they are broken down so catabolism it is the breakdown of the larger molecules to the smaller molecules it is the breakdown of the larger molecules to the smaller molecule it is the oxidative pathway it is not a reductive process it is the oxidative process through this reducing equivalents are formed hydrogen which is produced from the oxidation that is taken up by the nad and the fldh2 that nad and the fldh2 that are utilized for the anabolic process they are utilized for the anabolic process nadh nadph fldh2 three compounds are the reducing equivalents mainly they are utilized either for the energy purpose that again nadh and the fldh2 they enter into the respiratory chain through the oxidative phosphorylation they produce the atp while nadph which is formed that is utilized for the reducing equivalent for the anabolic process like the synthesis of the fatty acid 
like it is utilized for the synthesis of the glucose in the gluconeogenesis. It is utilized for the synthesis of the protein. It is utilized for the synthesis of the nucleic acids or the purine and paramin. So these are the anabolic process, which again utilize the nucleus, this reducing thing. Clear it is? Any other? Okay, thank you very much.